Hello, this is Brian Reyes, and I'm a cloud architect here with CenturyLink. Today I'll be covering the capability of creating a large partition using iSCSI targets on Windows 2012 server. Now, a client in iSCSI is going to be termed the initiator. And this is the system that will be consuming or really managing the storage services that the iSCSI targets will provide. And an iSCSI target is going to be a server or servers that have storage and are accessible from the iSCSI initiator over iSCSI. iSCSI is really more of a block level storage mechanism that is really allowing the ability to share storage over the network. And what's unique about this is it's showing up really in disk management as a partition or drives that you can actually stripe, combine, format, um, areas of that nature rather than a UNC path, uh, for example, to storage that is really shared but not really giving you too much in terms of control with the ability of how you use the partitions, uh, such as things like formatting or striping. So with that uh, discussion out of the way, let's go ahead and look at our overall environment. And if we look from my CenturyLink Cloud portal, I have my initiator server, which has just a standard C partition. I've got my iSCSI target one, which I provided three one terabyte drives, and my iSCSI target two, which ha has two one terabyte drives. What I'm going to be doing is combining the targets from iSCSI Target 1 and iSCSI Target 2, and I'll present it on my initiator as one large 5 terabyte drive. Now, prior to doing this video, I went ahead and set up my iSCSI Target 2 and went through the steps that I'm going to go ahead and outline for you on iSCSI Target 1. So if, if you follow along with iSCSI Target 1, uh, it's going to be basically a wash, rinse, and repeat for any additional targets that you'll be presenting disk from. So this is an overall view of my iSCSI Target 1 with my three one terabyte drives. Uh, iSCSI Target 2 with my two. And you'll see right now that the iSCSI initiator doesn't have that large drive. And we'll work through the progression of adding that drive and using iSCSI targets to present. So first off, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and walk through the steps I've already done on target two. And how we do this is we're going to start right here. We'll be adding a role, our iSCSI roles. We can do that in a number of different areas. You can do it from going over to the right area and selecting Manage and Add Roles. Or you can go directly into Add Roles and Features from the Server Management uh, front page or dashboard. So here we go through some steps, fairly basic. We're going to do all the defaults and until we get down to this server role. Now the server role is identified in File and Storage Service. And then you'll drop down to File and iSCSI Service. From here, I'm rolling down to iSCSI Target Server. I'll go ahead and add that feature. And I'm going to go ahead and add iSCSI Target Storage Provider, VDS and VSS. You can get some additional details by looking at the description. So I'll hit Next, and then Next, and then Confirm the installation of this service. So we see that the installation succeeded on this target. I'm going to go ahead and close that section of it. 
Now when we drop into File and Storage Services, you'll notice that iSCSI now populates since we installed those services. Um, so I'll go ahead and go over to the iSCSI. And from here, we're going to create an iSCSI virtual disk. So I'll go ahead and select this. It will take a minute for the disk to populate over here underneath the storage location. I'm going to identify the first disk that I'm going to go ahead and bring up. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a virtual disk name of target1, since I'm on, on my iSCSI target1. I'm going to do this as terabyte 1. You can provide a description at this point. I'm going to leave blank to speed through the demonstration. I'm going to use the entire space. And you typically want to use fixed size. Um, if you do dynamically expanding, it's going to have a lot of churning um, and performance hit. Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to uncheck the clear, the virtual disk on allocation. Um, if you were to go ahead and set this up, you'll see that uh, choosing this will actually clear the um, disk to zero and it'll give you more information uh, on the screen but I would suggest um, unchecking that if you're just going through a testing perspective um, but if you're going towards production you definitely would like to do a clear the virtual disk on allocation. Now since this is my first target on this system, I'm going to go ahead and choose new iSCSI target. The additional one terabyte drives I'll add to an existing iSCSI target. Now this target name is going to be iSCSI01 large. I'm not going to give it a description at this point. Now my access server, what it's looking for is what server is going to be accessing this. Um, this will be the iSCSI initiator, and you can get that information from the CenturyLink Cloud portal um, or directly in from the server itself. Mine is a 10 dot address. Once I've added the address, I select OK. Um, this will tell the system where it's coming in and what server is going to be accessing the storage and the target. I'm going to bypass the authentication, I'll go to confirmation, and I will go ahead and create this virtual disk. Upon completion, I'll hit close. Now I'm going to repeat the step for the additional uh, virtual disk that, that I have that I want to present. So real quickly, And again, I'm going towards the existing iSCSI target. I'm selecting that. It'll select it by default. After the summary, I'm going to confirm and create. One thing I'm going to point out on this third one, as I go through these steps, oh, it's on this one. Um, each one of these target storage is going to be created as a VHDX that will be presented and shared to the iSCSI initiator. So I just wanted to point that out. Again, we're going to uncheck the clear virtual disk on allocation. And we're going to actually attach it to the existing iSCSI target. I don't need to select it since it's already selected by default. And at this point, I will create the third target disk. So we have the three VHDX files that will be presented to the iSCSI initiator. At this point, proceed to part two to complete the demonstration.